Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining. First of all, uh, when I sent this invite out, I apologize. I put it in for 30 minutes. Uh, probably it'll be a little closer to 45 to 50, so my apologies for that. We have muted everybody. Uh, if you do need to unmute yourself, please hit the space bar. Uh, also, we'll have questions throughout the uh, presentation, hopefully. And if so, Gordon will show you where to uh, put those in and uh, in the chat bar. And then when we have a stopping point, uh, Gordon will recognize it or I'll help to moderate and get those to him. Also, we'll have a Q&A afterwards if available. Uh, be glad to do one-on-ones or um, a company-based presentation as needed. Uh, also, if you want a copy of this presentation, please uh, contact Gordon and myself and uh, we'll send you a YouTube link. Pre please give us a few days to, uh, to get that uploaded. Uh, Gordon does a great job putting those together and takes you just a little bit of time to uh, kind of do some editing with that. So we will have two presentations next Tuesday and Thursday uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Dave Kralovitz, uh will be doing his fifth and sixth medical uh, presentations. He's our global product manager for medical on alternative medical device tests using pressure to KMS flow parts two and three. Uh, my name is David Skaggs. I'm with the American Sales Manager of CTS based out of Nashville. I want to thank you all for joining. Presenting today will be Gordon, Gordon Spleet, our global product manager. Uh, um, been with uh, CTS for 25 years now, has a wealth of knowledge and experience across the globe. Uh, also, we have Shankar, our uh, GM over Asia and Standard Products, joining us. And our, our GM, Mike Tanner, is actually out visiting customers today. But uh, just on his behalf, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. So thank you for your time and uh, appreciate it, Gordon. Thanks again for putting this together. And I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thanks, David. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an, uh, a participation webinar. So as we have questions, please use the chat bar in the bottom of your screen, and you may send that to either David Skaggs, myself, or to everyone uh, with those questions, and we'll answer them as we go. Great. So who, who is Cincinnati Test Systems? Uh, we are part of the TASI group. The TASI group is four divisions, product integrity, assembly and test, package integ integrity, and the flow group. We are part of the product integrity group with our partners Inomatic, a leak test company in Germany, CTS Schreiner, another leak test company with Inomatic in Germany, our data analytics partner and in-process test, Symmetric, and our automotive test group, Sierra CP Engineering. TASI is a worldwide organization uh, supplying uh, support in the United States, Canada, Europe, India, China, and Korea. Uh, who is Cincinnati Test Systems? Well, we were established in 1981. We are located in Harrison, Ohio, a suburb of Cincinnati. We have direct sales service and application engineering in North America, Germany, the UK, India, China, and Korea. We also have sales and service representation in North America, Brazil, Ireland, Israel, Taiwan, Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. We are the leading solutions provider of leak test instruments and turnkey function test systems, um, supplying over 5,000 instruments and turnkey systems annually. Uh, lots of our mach machinery is also automated uh, in introducing PLCs, and National Instruments. We are a National Instruments Alliance partner. Cincinnati Test Systems is also a worldwide organization headquartered in Cincinnati. We have uh, satellite offices, sales and service, and manufacturing in Detroit, along with Ottawa, Canada, sales and service in Mexico. Uh, we have sales service in the UK and Ireland, along with our facility Inomatic leak test machinery and instrumentation supplier in Germany, along with CTS Schreiner. And then we have sales service and engineering in India, also in China, and sales and service in Korea. What industries does CTS support? Well, we support all of them. Um, if you drove your car to work today, anything in your car uh, that shouldn't leak was leak tested by CTS instrumentation and machinery. 
Uh, that includes powertrain, electric vehicles, appliances, appliances, uh, your household faucets are all leak tested along with um, cell phones and other HVAC uh, air conditioning devices in your home. What technologies do we support? Well, we also support all of those. Um, anything from pressure decay and vacuum decay, that's both leak and blockage testing. Mass flow testing, that's leakage and blockage and functional flow testing. Plus tracer gas testing, which includes uh, trace gases like helium, hydrogen, and other gases uh, using hard vacuum mass spec testing, heart, um, accumulation, testing, purging containment test, and also simple sniff application testing. CTS has a wide range of instrumentation that we support, anything from entry level, simple pressure decay or differential pressure decay instruments to both mass flow and pressure decay instrumentation with controls on board for controlling instrument or controlling test systems. And then we also have uh, a instrument that is multi-channel. It's like having four instruments in one enclosure, along with high flow and precision flow applications and our European PN style design instruments. All of the R leak test instruments are supplied with leak standards. Uh, that's A2LA accredited and manufactured at CTS in our ISO 17025 certified laboratory. And those come in both airflow and also trace gas uh, leak standards. And CTS Connects, we will talk more about these pneumatic and manually actuated seals. And we also have a test lab and service center at CTS for supporting our customers uh, testing applications to prove testability and also uh, adequate cycle time and the right to help determine the right technology for uh, leaking parts in that. So why choose CTS? We, we have the largest experts in the industry for supporting your needs 24 seven and supplying instrumentation and also functional test systems. Okay, so let's talk about sealing parts efficiently and CTS connects. Well, first, the uh, outline of what we're going to talk, to, talk about is an in, uh, introduction to CTS connects. Uh, we'll talk about our common pneumatic connectors, common manual connectors, uh, medical design use and uh, fixture design and, and its use of those efficiently in your fixturing. And then also standard connectors in our custom connectors and sealed material. So first off, what is a CTS Connect? Well, a CTS Connect is a quick design seal. Quick design meaning it's supplied to you so it will fit over a port or into a port and seal your part positively. Um, it's ID, internal diameter, and outside diameter um, designs, along with also face seal designs. Um, we, we've used these on many applications from vacuum pressure all the way up to 2500 PSI. And they're designed to easily integrate into with our instrumentation and onto tooling. So we, like I said earlier, the markets we support are all of those we find applications for leak testing, for filling, for cleaning, burst testing, um, sealing for pressure testing, sealing for flushing, uh, for charging systems, uh, and proving integrity. And also, we use these for part handling as well. So, so let's talk about some of our common connectors. One of the most common connectors we have is our inside diameter or CI connector. It's pneumatically controlled, seals smooth bores, and also threaded bores or threaded ports. Um, the key with a threaded port, and I'll talk about this a little later, is a top hat design so that you're not sealing on the threads, but you're grabbing the threads and pulling a face seal into the, a, a smooth surface on your part so that you can positively seal the part. And those have ranges anywhere from a quarter inch ID all the way up to four inches. And then um, standard NPTSE 
AE and metric and BS design fittings. Uh, the, the key to these is being able to test and hold in place up to higher pressures. Uh, these are rated up to 120 PSI hold force on parts. Um, if you need to hold back more pressure, then you would back these up with uh, seal force and with uh, Desteco type clamps that I will talk about. And these, all of our seals come with medical grade seal kits. Uh, the key to a positive ID seal is our patented built-in stroke limiter. That way when this seal is actuated outside of a port, it does not blow the seal off. It will stop before that uh, you overextend the seal and uh, have to physically remove portions of it to put the seal back on. Um, it's material grade, uh, allows for longer seal life, and we have these components in stock for a five-day delivery. Another common seal is an OD, or an outside diameter seal, of our CO connectors. Again, they're pneumatically controlled seals on the outside diameter of smooth and threaded tubes. Um, and they can go down to very low uh, uh, diameters, especially for the medical industry testing needles, a 0.03 inch OD, and all the way up to a standard three inch. And then they can also be larger uh, as customized. Uh, the ports are NPT ports, SAE, metric, and BS. And also, these are rated for a little higher pressure vacuum all the way up to 500 PSI test pressures. And the key with these designs is a, a set screw that you can screw the face down to a specific position and then set that in place so that when you deactuate this, the seal material goes back into place. And the key to both these designs is a pneumatically actuated cylinder internal to these devices where it pushes against the seal and causes that seal to increase or compress around the outside diameter or inside diameter of a port. And our, all our standard components have a five day delivery time. Some of the CI and CO Connect accessories that make it easy to implement into uh, tooling stations, which we will talk about and how to, how to do this, is uh, a tapered lead-in guide for OD style seals. Uh, that way your part can uh, connect to the, if it's not a completely centered or toleranced part, and you come in to, uh, um, it, when you come into it to seal it, you can use this uh, adapter to lead the, the device and the part into the OD of this uh, connect. And then we also have extenders for our ID seals. That way uh, we have large bodies on some of our ID seals. And if you have interferences around your parts, we can put an extender so that you can reach those hard to, hard to reach fittings uh, around or inside of a part design. And then a spring mount option for both these types of seals it allows a lead in and also some compliance for that as you may touch your part and allow the, the fitting to, or the uh, connector to move around and fit into or around a part easily. All right, so let's talk about some manually actuated seals. They're very similar to our pneumatically actuated seals However, there are cam actuated levered design. You manually put the uh, seal into a part with these are ID seals and actuate the armature and a cam pulls on a spring and pulls on the, the, the seal material to help it compress into the ID of that part. Uh, these go from quarter inch up to three inches, very similar to our pneumatic seals and also up to 100 PSI. Uh, some of these, you, if you have very smooth bores, it may be necessary to put a lanyard on this. That way, if you have the possibility of it popping out, it can catch the seal uh, before it moves very far. Uh, these are some side views of how that part looks 
are these connectors look when your armature is actuated and sealing into the ID of a port. And they come in plug style, a fill style, that means there's a fill port on it, and also a fill port with a handle to make it easy to move around. All right, so this is an ID top hat seal. I, I talked about this earlier as a pneumatic uh, seal for putting into a threaded port and sealing. I will play a small video that actually shows you how that works. So you manually place it into a threaded port and actuate the armature. And what that does is grabs the threads and then pulls the face onto that surface. So you can see the compressed seal in that area and how it makes a very nice positive sealing position and repeatable sealing compared to on threads that may cause excessive wear on your seal material and also leaks. Because in our industry, everything leaks and you're testing for how much you don't want that product to leak and the variation associated with it and controlling all of that variation, especially having non-leaking seals. All right, so we also have manually actuated OD seals. Uh, they also have a cam actuated lever, works very similarly. Uh, and also the, all the same seal ranges uh, up to from 0.03 inch up to one and a half inches and works on threaded designs as well. Uh, sealing pressure from vacuum all the way up to 100 PSI. And again, if you have a smooth bore OD part or a smooth pipe with an outside diameter that is very smooth and no way to hold a part in place uh, over, a, over molding, uh, you would want to put a lanyard at higher pressures on this as well. Okay, so let's talk about medical applications and sealing options. Uh, CTS supplies a full range of CTS connectors with uh, designed for the medical device industry that has special requirements. Um, all the product touch points are 316 stainless steel. Uh, we use FDA approved seal material which is both urethane and silicone based options. One of the biggest uses of CTS connects in the medical industry is on lure fittings. So we have a specially designed lure fitting. It's pneumatically actuated. It conducts a face seal on a lure design that is held in place by a positively in place by a stainless steel replaceable fitting. And you can see that different design lures will fit in here and a face seal is actuated against the face of the lure. And that is removable uh, with detents so that you can uh, easily replace that or change it to meet different designs. Here's an example of a specific design where we have detents built into this uh, fixed fitting. They're stainless steel detents and it allows positive placement of holding a part in place before it's sealed and also holding irregular shapes parts in place. That way the weight of it um, doesn't pull itself out before that seal is actuated during the beginning of the test. Another design that's used a lot in um, the medical industry, but also for sealing flexible tubing, and that is uh, it's really hard to seal on the outside diameter of a flexible tube. And if you go into the ID, of a flexible tube, pressurize it, and then put pressure on it, it's gonna balloon and pop off of that seal. So what we've designed for this is a OD seal that fits over a stainless steel fixture in, in the uh, fitting. Um, that stainless steel insert helps support your tubing as you actuate your seal and compress on the outs outside diameter of that tubing. So it actually holds the uh, tube in place while you pressurize it and test it. And it also has a fill port through that stainless steel insert. Allows for very simple positive sealing of flexible tubing. All right, let's talk about medical device fixturing and utilizing CTS connects. Uh, 
it's usually a medical design fixture is a bench top fixture, um, allows for small compact designs, um, and includes all stainless steel fittings, touch points, and typically if you have something that should be a non-marring surface, uh, you would utilize white Delrin as the touch point, and then a stainless steel base, all the stainless steel is 316, and also hardened anodized if you're using any aluminum components. And then typically your bench top mounting uh, your bit is uh, introduced then with your instrumentation. And the key to pneumatic actuation of CTS connects is actually driving pilot air by the instrumentation. There will be there are solenoids, air solenoids inside our black belt and black belt pro instrument that upon start will actuate a seal tooling output, which then supplies pneumatic air to our CTS connects after it's manually put in place and started and um, seals the part. And then we'll automatically release that seal at the end of test and allows you to hold it in place if you have rejected parts. So some very simple automation integrated with CTS connects and our instrumentation like the Black Belt and Black Belt Pro. Okay, let's, let's talk about efficient station design um, using manual or automated part handling, um, manual or automated seal placement, part fixturing, and seals. So when you're designing a test, it's always good to come in with a plan and understand whether the cycle time can accommodate a manual or automatic sealing design. Um, and it could be a mixture of both. So in this case, we have um, we have a uh, identified our production throughput, and this operator on this test stand will operate two stations. And in this system, there's actually four sets of tooling, and the part is put into place, and the system automatically senses which part is in place and connected with uh, the seal force to hold it in place. And when you hit start, it will start the fixture that the part was loaded into. And what you want to take into account when you have manually held in parts with pneumatically actuated seals is what is the locking force necessary to hold this part in place? What kind of operator movement do you have to incorporate on each one of these manually actuated seals or clamps? And uh, how efficiently will the operator be able to use those and ergonomically? So taking all of that into, um, into an idea of how to design this is very important. And then also, what, what is the line configuration? That's also going to determine how you place this tooling in your line. Is it a lean cell design? Is it single piece flow, are you batch testing, and what is the ultimate budget on this system? Um, if you've listened to some of our past webinars on efficient seal and testing, the other thing that we have is an air accumulator on this test stand. It, air, air fluctuations when you're conducting mass flow testing or when you have pneumatic seal designs very similar to these CTS connects. If you have fluctuating air, coming to this test stand, you may have variation in your testing because parts are moving because the force holding those in place or your test pressures are changing, especially in mass flow. So our suggestion is to put regulated air accumulators at your test stations so upstream air usage does not affect your leak testing. Okay, what are some of the things to take into account for fixturing and holding apart? Well, the, the purpose of a fixture is to hold and control a part during a leak test. Parts should not move while they're under test. Um, the other thing that you want to do is include filler blocks or filler volumes into your ceiling so that you take up as much free air space in your parts as possible. And then nesting, you want to have flexible, if you have flexible parts, uh, using constraints to help limit the expansion of the part while it's under test, or uh, the way you seal it uh, will also help 
to keep limit uh, expansion. And then other considerations to take into account, what are the control surfaces of your part? Um, you want to clamp the part using those control surfaces first, holding it in place, and then bring in your uh, sealing devices to the part. That way you don't have excessive wear on your seals because the part's not completely aligned in the fixture when you're trying to seal it. So there are a couple sealing activation methods. Uh, the first is a manual sealing activation and that's using Desteco clamps. Uh, these are cam over Desteco clamps moving seals into a part. Um, or you can actually manually attach, attach and actuate uh, uh, CTS connects. And we'll see some examples of that. Also pneumatic seals can be integrated into manually placed uh, or you can pneumatically bring those CTS connects into a, a position on your part. And also fixture base plates. Incorporating these fixture plates into a test station efficiently, and I'll talk about um, seal movement associated with fixture plates. All right, some examples of manually clamping a uh, part putting a part in place, manually clamping it and sealing one side of it, and then bringing a CTS connect into place over that part manually. Uh, and then a simple start button on your I-28 starts this test and stops it. Uh, the I-28 is controlling a cylinder so that it actuates the CTS connect at the beginning of test. And then this is an example of a pneumatically actuated CTS connect brought into a part. Uh, the, the key to pneumatically actuating seals into a part is having a safety circuit. In this case, there is a Lexan cover that closes down around this fixture. And with that closure, this uh, seal uh, proximity safety switch is made, and then this actuation can begin at the beginning of start test. Some fixture designs to take into account. Um, like I've said, variation is, exists in leak testing and we're me measuring variation associated with the leak. And we want to disconnect or disassociate any other variation from leak testing. Some things to look at, um, fluctuating station pressure. That's what I talked about earlier, making sure you have an air accumulator if you have lots of air usage upstream or downstream from, from your test system. Choosing the right seal durometer. Uh, all of our seal designs come, can be identified for seal durometer, anything from 30 durometer up to 90 durometer. So having the right seal durometer to actuate and seal onto a part repeatedly and hold back your test pressure so that you don't have seal burps during test is very important. And then uh, building in positive stops. A lack of positive stops or positive seal placement will cause some issues. And here's an example. If we have a base fixture with a seal and you bring a part and clamp it, but don't allow your part to come to a positive stop during clamping, you are going to see this part float on your seals. And as this seal wears, your, your part will float on that seal, causing volumetric changes during test, which will be measured as a pressure change and then identified as a accept or a reject. And that could be a false accept or a false reject. The other thing that uh, to discuss is bringing CTS connects into a positive position every time. So in this case, this part is loaded into a fixture and we manually, you can see the Desteco clamp handle here. We move this whole fixture design into place on a slide and that comes to a fixed position every test. That way we're not changing volume of this part because of its position of CTS connects uh, on the ID uh, or the OD of the part. 
Here's some other examples of the uh, station with uh, design changeover built into the fixturing. Uh, we have a mixture of manually placed CTS connects and uh, pneumatically actuated CTS connects and a manually actuated clamping ceiling design here in the back. So our first tube design is fixtured or manually placed into an OD uh, CTS connect and then it has a manually placed ID seal in the back that is positioned, you can see it is designed to be held in position in this little Del Run block. That helps you uh, put a face seal up to the hose end, that's a positive position, and then holding the CTS connect in place while you pressurize the part so it doesn't move around is important. And then you can see that in this design as well. Uh, a positive pl face placement for your ID, manually actuated ID seal, uh, held in a location uh, with Delrin blocks, and then this clamping mechanism in the back uh, seals or clamps and seals the part for pressurize, pressurizing by the I-28. And the I-28 is also controlling the pilot air for the CTS connects. Okay, let's talk about some other CTS connect designs. Uh, uh, what a customized application onto our standard seals, and this can go on to manually actuated seals and uh, a lot of our pneumatic actuated seals, ID and OD seals. It's a spring lock mechanism, thumb actuated, so that you're putting your tube, it's typically a hard fixed tube with a uh, flange on the end, and it allows you to put the part in place, you actuate this, move it out of the way of your ID seal, put the seal onto a tube end, and then this then allow that locking mechanism to lock over a flange so that when this is actuated and then test pressure is introduced into the, the part, it doesn't push itself off of the seal. This kind of seal design can hold in place without a backing mechanism because you're using the flange on the hose itself to hold it in place. And that can be used in ID and OD style designs for, um, for hoses, hard fixed hoses. Another positive placement design is actually using a uh, manually actuated seal with thread grabbing. We can design this for uh, different types of threads up to two inch MPT, and then obviously um, British standard threads as well, and SAE threads and metric threads. And uh, it allows a positive placement and also a holding mechanism in your threads in conducting a face seal. Um, and these can test effectively up to 1,000 PSI. Other ways to hold a part in place is a spring locking jaw mechanism where when you actuate these, it op opens these jaws so that you can put your thread or your uh, flanged seal in place, uh, deactuate it, and hold it there while you conduct an ID, or I'm sorry, an OD seal, or sometimes we can introduce a face seal into this design. And these can go up to even higher pressures, 2400 PSI. And then another great way to seal um, parts is a smooth bore outside gripping inside seal. So that sounds confusing, but it's actually real easy. It's if you have smooth uh, pipes that need to be held in place and you can easily conduct an ID seal, uh, actuated, manually actuated or pneumatically actuated. And when you actuate this, it, it brings these devices, this device into place around the outside diameter and holds it in place while you seal on the inside diameter. And then you can do the same with a, uh, outside diameter seal as well, um, and, and a heat treated collet with a compression seal. All right, some of our uh, custom face seal designs is placing a part with flanges on it into a specially designed fitting. 
and conducting a face seal on that part. And you can see it sits in place very simply. Uh, obviously, this would be brazed to some other types of tubing, and that's what you're testing for is that braze joint. And other ways to customize flange designs is larger tubing. Uh, if it has a flange on it, you can design a face seal into a larger fitting, put, put that in place, and then manually actuate it to seal onto the face while it's held in place uh, under pressure. And then other, we, we have other custom design shapes. If you have oddly designed ports, we can custom design and custom mold seals or custom cut seals to meet those designs. Uh, this is an oddly shaped outside diameter part, which we were actually sealing around that whole uh, uh, teardrop shape. And then also if you have dual port design requirements, this is an example of two ports that were side by side uh, using one seal mechanism to seal both. And this was a plug seal. These could also be designed as fill through ports. And then this is a special port that had two seals we needed to isolate internally and seal in between and conduct testing on the inside. Uh, this, could be, this can be designed with a fill port as well. Uh, and if you have multiple positions, it can go up to three positions. Here's some examples of dual OD sealing on different size ports where you have an OD seal that's a little larger than the other and then two that were side by side, two tubes that were side by side, and this was manually put in place and manually actuated. Uh, actually, this is a pneumatically actuated seal. All right, so let's talk about seal material properties. Uh, we can supply both cut and molded seals. Uh, they're available in wide range of, a wide range of durometers, like I said, 30, to 30 40, 50, 60, 70 and then different variations uh, leading up into the harder durometers. Uh, they can be fiber filled, 80, 80 durometer, 90 durometer, and um, designed out of different materials to wear uh, better as well. And also FDA approved medical grade material using urethane and also silicone based uh, formulas. And then molded seals can also be made in all different si sizes and shapes. And our CTS Connects uh, feature material which uh, supply long cycle life, durability, and, and the biggest key to uh, CTS Connects is our um, stroke limiters to help reduce excessive seal wear. So that is using CTS Connects and some effective sealing designs. Uh, I look forward to answering any questions that you may have. All right. Any questions out yeah, there at all? Yes, David. No, I was going to say we didn't have any in the queue, and uh, thank you for putting this together, Gordon. It was excellent. Um, I'll, I'll, Gordon, there is one question there, um, actually, and it's who is my contact for sealing design in Canada, and I will send you a message on that real quick um, on the uh, um, that was sent to me. But uh, thanks for putting this together, and if you guys have uh, and gals, if you have. Um, want a link to this presentation, please feel free to uh, email Gordon or myself. Yeah, our emails here are here in this uh, uh, slide. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, get those out to you. And all of our, uh, those of, there was the question about who to contact in Canada. All of our sales reps are, are uh, fully versed in our CTS Connects and can help you um, as your local contacts for those. Great. Well, if there's no questions, I, I do appreciate everyone's uh, attention and thanks for joining us today. And we'll, we uh, look forward to uh, you joining other webinars here in the future with us. Thanks.